Growing numbers of white British women are converting to Islam. But why would they want to give up all the freedoms their Western life allows? If you're one of these people that enjoy going out clubbing and getting completely rat off, you know, like laying in the curb like four o'clock in the morning with all stuff on your face and stuff, or maybe Islam isn't for you even though you might need it. How easy is it for converts to adapt to a faith where men can marry up to four wives? All my friends know that I'm a co-wife. I've never kept that a secret from anyone. But why are they embracing a faith that some people associate with religious extremism? The way I see it is I'm not a terrorist, and I know that my fiancé, the, the way he is, he's not a terrorist. Unlike the converts, Shana Bukhari was born and brought up a Muslim. I believe in my religion. Being modern doesn't mean I don't believe in God. But she doesn't regularly practice her Muslim faith. She loves all the freedoms her Western life allows. In fact, she's a model. In total contrast, she'll be meeting converts who try to follow Islamic guidelines in everything they do. I want to know why women are converting to Islam. So I'm going to go and meet five converts and try and understand why they've converted to a new religion. She'll find out how Islam's changed their lives and what unexpected difficulties they've had to face. I don't know how converts get married, I really don't. But what might the converts teach Shanna about her own faith? I look Muslim. Shanna's a 26-year-old Muslim from Manchester and she's a top model. I just love the whole looking so elegant, glamorous, pretty, dolled up. At the age of 15, I just knew I wanted to get into modelling. Shanna comes from a large British Pakistani family. I was the only one out of all the daughters who loved dressing up, who would change like three to four times a day, who would want to wear mummy's lipstick when mummy's out. I used to love wearing dresses every day and being dressed up all the time. I get excited just saying shopping because I love it so much. Shoes, handbags, oh, gorgeous outfits and stuff. I'm happy. Shanna wants to know why so many girls her age return their back on what most people think are the best bits of being young. You're young British female and you can wear what you want. You can have a crazy night out and come home at five in the morning with a, with a hangover and, and do all these things and it's like, okay, why, why are you choosing to leave all this fun and excitement and come into a total new faith that says you can't drink this alcohol, you've got to start dressing differently. So what is it that makes you choose and leave all that behind and come to something so new? A recent YouGov survey found that 69% of respondents think Islam encourages the repression of women and 50% associate Islam with terrorism. What puzzles me is someone who's new to the faith and religion. Don't they automatically think extremist, terrorism, does it not put them off and think, well, what is Islam? Despite all that, it's estimated that last year around 5,000 people converted to Islam in the UK. Over half were white and three-quarters of them were women. Shanna's setting out on her journey. She's travelling to Wales to meet her first convert, who's a brand new Muslim. In a small community near Bridgend, Claire's the only white Muslim girl in the village. Like many converts, she's taken a new Islamic name, and now she likes to be known as Sophia. Yeah, I think I'm gonna wear my like this today because that's where I like it. She's 24 and lives with her mum and dad, Jill and Brian. She was brought up a Christian and she graduated from college this year. Partying didn't have the same appeal for Sophia that it does to most girls in their 20s. Islam offered her something different. I'm quite conservative person. In Britain, everybody's very loose, you know, you can go out and get drunk. I've never been like that. And this is why Islam was so appealing to me, was because it was a religion where it was quite conservative. And obviously nothing like that really exists in Britain anymore. While most girls in Britain wear what they want, 
Practicing Muslim women often wear hijab, a headscarf and long loose clothing. So what if you have to wear a long dress and, and you know, cover yourself modestly? It's good dressing, you know, it's like, why would you want to get everything out? Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, what's the point? You know, who are you trying to prove to? If you're really okay with yourself, who cares what you wear? I'm a very fashionable person, but I'll do it with my own style. Things won't be out, my legs won't be out, my bum won't be out, do you get what I mean? But I'll still look really nice. There's a way of dressing that looks nice and modest, modestly. Some people might think these rules are repressive, but Sophia doesn't think so. All this stuff about women being oppressed and stuff, it's complete codswallop. It is. Uh, most of the girls I know, well, pretty much all the girls I know, the Muslims, they're spoiled rotten. If we want to work, we can work if we want. If we don't want to, our husband will provide for us, you know. And it says in the Quran that a woman can chase knowledge if she wishes. Sophia's come to the station to meet Shanna. She only became a Muslim a few weeks ago, so she has lots to tell about what it's like to be a convert. It's a big day for her, as she has an important meeting at the mosque in Cardiff. I love this. Oh, thank you. Thank that's you. Nice. Have you been a Muslim you know, like, all your life? Or? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Right, okay. That's a stupid question for really. me. <laughs> so where are we going today? Uh, basically, we're going to catch the train into Cardiff, and we're going to take, oh, I'm going to take you to my local mosque. Why are we going to the mosque? Well, basically, when I convert it, they're going to give me a certificate just as, like, authenticity that I'm a Muslim. Wow. <laughs> Muslims believe that when you convert to Islam, all the sins you've committed in your past are wiped out. When did you used to convert? It was like a couple of weeks ago, you know, wow. it's like everybody gets really excited because um, I'm like a newborn Muslim and everybody's like, oh, will you pray for me? Will you pray oh. for me? You know, because apparently, yeah. you know, uh, my prayers are a bit more powerful because they consider me as pure. How long have you been wearing the headscarf? I kind of experimented with it. I've got to be honest. I kind of put a scarf on my head. I wondered, like, hmm, can I do this, you know? But it's like, there are Muslims out there that didn't even wear hijabs, you know, like, yeah. like you, you know, as well, do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. you don't have to wear it. Yeah. Do you find that it helps you, like? To be honest, to be honest, yeah, they do look at you more, especially the men. Oh. Especially the men. I, it's, it's ridiculous how many men come on to me just because I'm wearing a hijab. Do you feel restricted in any way? Where I live, everything is so constrictive because I'm white as well. People think that I'm like a traitor and stuff, which I'm not. Yes. Converting to Islam is relatively straightforward. You need to recite a statement saying that Allah is the only God and Muhammad is his prophet. It's said in front of witnesses and it's known as a Shahada. This is the center where I do my Shahada. Oh, so basically now what we're going to do, we're going to go in, hopefully get my certificate, <laughs> you know, that they've hopefully done for me. Uh -huh. Come in. Hi. Uh, Hello, Claire. All right, Uncle, how are you? I'm fine. Good, <laughs> good, thank you. The certificate. As, let's read it together. It says, let's read it now. It's an Islamic testimony certificate, 19th of September 2012. To whom it may concern, Clay Louise Evans, aka Safia. <laughs> um, uh, this is to certify that Ms. Clay Louise Evans, Safia, has been embraced and accepted Islam, uh, Islam as a religion on August 2012. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> it's very nice. <laughs> Accepting Allah has changed Sophia's outlook on life. I noticed a couple of weeks ago I went out and uh, I felt like my eyes were like open. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's like I saw everything again, you yes, know? Yeah. It's so weird, you know. I just find that Allah's like just showered me in blessings and stuff. <laughs> hey, how did it go? Yeah, here it is. Wow, <laughs> so you have your certificate now. Yeah, yeah, definitely Muslim. It's all in here, really. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Being accepted as a Muslim is nerve-wracking for converts, and the mosque is Sophia's first hurdle. Iba, this is Claire. Um, Claire, this is Iba. Um, she's new to Islam. She converted like about a month ago. <laughs> the good news is, she's made welcome by the local Muslim community up in the women's prayer hall. <laughs> like new, you know, happy, very comfortable. Yes. 
this is like just a small gift from me and my family. You it's, didn't um, have to do it's like that. prayer clothes when you pray, like it'll be so much easier for you at home. Oh my and a prayer gosh. match. So um, yeah, instead of you like I'm always like now. having to put stuff on, they're here. And this is fine. Right. And yes. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, thank you. It's so nice. Thank you. It's so nice to have you here. Seriously, don't lose your passion and motivation. Oh, so it's so sweet yeah. of you. Thank so, you so yeah. much. Oh. It's time for evening prayer. Under Islam, men and women always pray separately to protect women's modesty. It's early days for Sophia and praying is new to her. Obviously Islam is about Allah and we all pray to Allah together. The feeling you get when you pray is it's much different when you just put your hands together. Something washes over you, it's like the deepest meditation that you can think of. It's the first time Shan has been in a mosque since she was a child. Seeing Sophia and the girls pray together has had an unexpected impact. Today has been a bit of an experience. I felt a bit emotional watching someone who's just newly come into a faith that I've been born into and um, how she's putting all this effort and how I have been neglecting what I should be doing. It just got me thinking. What makes it more emotional and sad for me is that I know how to pray. So I'm sat in a mosque and I'm watching people read and I'm just I'm saying inside myself, I know how to do this. And I bet you guys think I don't when you look at me. I'm a bad girl, aren't I? <laughs> Crap. If you're a practicing Muslim, you're supposed to pray five times a day. And wherever you are, you have to pray in the direction of the Muslim holy city, Mecca. The first prayer is at the crack of dawn, but Sophia is still learning. I know this like morning prayer is like four until five. I, I gotta be honest, I don't know who goes up at four twenty four in the morning. Do you get what I mean? You know, <laughs> you gotta be really dedicated to do that. Because although I love to pray, I love my sleep as well. So I kind of always miss this, but like I always like make up for it later. So I don't know if you're supposed to do that. But I'm probably really naughty Muslim. Still haven't opened this. I was kind of afraid to open it in case I got dirty. They're like shows you which way <laughs> to pray and stuff. It's really ironic actually, it's supposed to be for Islam and yet it says made in China. <laughs> That's really strange. I also have um, like my uh, my book and like, it's, it's a bit childish but like it's my book and like how to do prayers and stuff, you know, it's just got like, like what are you supposed to say and got all that sort of stuff in it, you know. So yeah, so whenever I start praying, I always have that in front of me and I do it really slowly because like, I can't do it really fast because like obviously I'm new and I want to do it properly. One of the toughest hurdles converts have to face is the reaction of their families. Shan has come to meet Sophia's mum, Jill, to see what she thought about her daughter's decision. How are um, other members of the family with Sophia's change of religion now? They're not very happy. They, oh. they don't, they're just not very happy about it. Do you think they'll ever get used to the idea? It's very hard. As they, they are pretty accepting my family. Mm -hmm. I like to think that they are and they will come round in time. What do you think about Islam? I started reading things and I read the Quran and I just found lots of it like the Bible. You know, which I'd read things mm -hmm. in the Bible and I really don't see it's such a bad religion and, and things that she's told me that the parents have more say in things. Mm -hmm. I see lots of things. The way my mother used to say things about courting and mm -hmm. that to fetch the boy home and wait. Yeah. The Muslim religion is more of the old fashioned mm -hmm. Christian way. Mm -hmm. Sophia's dad, Brian, has lived in the Welsh Valleys all his life. For him, Islam feels like a very foreign religion. I can't say I'm really up for it. Like, it's a different culture, isn't it? You know, so, like, she seems to be happy with it, so, you know. 
She's 24 years of age now, you know, <laughs> she's got all my makeup now, but uh, I did tell her, you know, she is Welsh.